Okay. Um, let me get started here. So there. Okay. Um, so, a couple of announcements. Let me. Okay, here we go. Um, okay, so what I'll do on the waiting list thing this week, we'll mail out to everybody. I think I last week I kind of went through everybody who was seemed to fit in so far. I'll now mail I'll mail each of you who were on that waiting list. You know that we've asked for the campus to put you in the class. Okay, so you can if you don't get in or something else, you can follow up on that. So I'll do that next few days. Okay. Um, Anything else? Uh, on the homework, problem three, okay, that's the one out of the book, you don't have to worry about the body effect. Okay? So remember that. So that's problem three. And problem one, I think it is, the part where you calculate saturation, the edge of saturation, you know, linear region operation there, it ends up to be a quadratic, so you're going to have to sort of solve that. So don't be surprised when you find the math gets a little messy on that problem one, the part there where you do this linear saturation transition. So a couple little hints, I guess. A lot of questions of that in the office hours today. Uh, oh, yeah, another question. Okay, another thing in the office hours was um, how do we deal with uh, curving the class at the end of the term? Because it's probably, I don't know, probably quarter to a fifth of the students are graduate students. How do I work that relative to the undergrads in the class? What I do is I curve everything according to the undergraduate grades. I just take the graduate students out of the curving strategy, curve it, and then I take the graduate students and I just throw them in and see where they come out. Okay, so I don't care trying to make the overall class average. I think the class average comes out to be a B minus, I think is the, uh, or something like that, right? You know, Whatever the department asks me to do, that's what I do, and then I just then it shoots up from there when I add, or it goes down. Depending what the graduate students do, right? So <laughs> who knows which direction they go? Right? So they may drag it down for you guys. So um, okay, so that's that's the strategy. So any questions about grading, uh, waiting lists, or anything else? Okay. Um, any questions about material from last week? Since we uh, anything, my chance to. A little bit behind the lectures. I'll try to catch up today. And um, okay, so uh, let's. I'll quickly review what we what we got to last time, and then we'll. Now we won't do stuff in such detail as I did. Yes. I actually have a question for okay. you. Okay. Sure. It's a part in the book where he uses the chain rule, and I didn't follow. Uh, it's on page fifty-five. Yeah. The chain rule. Okay. It's it's this line above equation three thirty two, mm -hmm. where he talks about the change in the threshold with respect to V n equals this. Uh, new okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's just I mean, where did that come from. It's straightforward, yeah, it's just a math thing. I just you take D D thermal, I guess D th D two was as the second threshold or something like that. I don't know what this is, right? It's the second Yeah, right. We can just look at it here. So zoom down here. Zoom. Zoom. There we go. Okay, right. So okay, um this is kind of the old partial derivative chain rule to talk about there, right? And I think all this he does is goes in and calculates this this factor here must come from something I did earlier or something like that? Yeah, that's my campus. Where that came from? Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm not going to be able to figure it out and let's, you and I can do it. Okay, <laughs> it should be straightforward. I mean, I think it's just um, D, what is D, th I don't know what DTHT2 is. What's that? That's threshold voltage? Yeah, no, let me. Uh, they break her after class. We can okay, sorry. <laughs> Any more questions that I can answer so well? <laughs> All right. Um, 
Okay, so let's go. So we did last time, we started off with the inverter, as you remember, okay? And it's basically this circuit here. What I said was, okay, this is the high gain stage. The, we calculated big G sub M, this thing it equals to little g sub M minus that. And R out, looking into here, if this is RD, R out is equal to looking up, you see RD, and looking down, may we do calculate output resistance, we set the input independent source to zero, and we look down, and this is a small signal now, right? I'm talking about now. We look, looking down here, we'll see just R0, little r0 looking down, so this is, so the gain of this is big GM times R out, okay? So that's that, okay? Then the extension to this, I don't like this pin. Okay, the next stage was to put in a degeneration resistor, okay? And this answer to this problem right here, looking down into the drain of this transistor, is a really important answer because it's going to keep showing up. All right? And looking into here, it's not just simply, you might think, well, geez, it's just R0 from here to here. Why isn't it just R0 plus RS is what I see from here? That might be the simplest, I think, thing to think about. But you've got to remember that what's happening is if we have a chain, if we have current, so let's just, I think this is what I did in my notes here. Mm. Yeah, let me just do it. So let's break this problem up. Don't solve two problems. So we're trying to calculate the output resistance looking into here. We'll break into two problems, looking down and looking up. Looking up is simply RD. It'll be in parallel with what we see looking down. I'll often do this. I'll call this R out. I'll call this R out prime because it's kind of the simplified version of what I'm trying to really calculate. We don't want to calculate the parallel resistor problem again, right? So R out resistance looking in from V out, which is what we're really after, is going to be R out prime in parallel with RD. So now we're simply got to find R out prime. So what's that look like? So the problem we have there really looks like, let me just put this like this, okay, is we have, and we're trying, and we're going to do is we can, which ways we can do it, we can force a current and calculate the voltage and since we're calculating output resistance, that means we ground the inputs at the independent voltage equal to zero, so at Vn equal to zero, okay? So now we need to calculate what do we see looking down into here, okay? This is R out prime. This is Rs. I don't like this pin, okay? Um, and what we're going to see at this point right here, right, IT goes into this transistor and it comes right out and there's no place else it can go. So at this point right here, we're going to see a voltage of IT times RS. Okay, so that's the source voltage here, right? V source is ITS. Well, if the source voltage is changing, VGS is equal to VG minus VS. VG we say is zero. But VS is not zero. VS is equal to ITRS. So we're going to have a VGS appear across this when we, draw, we force a current into this output of this, into this drain. That's really important because what that is then, what that does is, remember what this transistor model looks like, right? Here's our gate which is grounded. And here's, and let me just get rid of, Right now, I'll set VBS equal to zero. You can do this with VBS finite. It's you know a small change in the answer. This is GM times VGS, right? And then we have this R zero here, and this goes down to big RS. Okay. Now I'm saying is that this voltage right here, this is VGS. This voltage right here is is IT times RS. If I'm forcing an IT into the output, and I'm trying to calculate this voltage right here, VT, okay? 
And so what's going to happen? So here's the really interesting thing here. What happens is, as we force this current, we develop a voltage here. We develop a voltage here, and then what does that? What happens to that? Well, it's the VGS that we get is equal to minus ITRS. So I can rewrite this as equal to GM times minus IT times RS. Or I can let's get rid of that minus sign. This is equal to, and what I'm going to do is turn this around, turn this current source around, make it so it's going upwards. Use my blue pen here. It goes upwards. And for that, when it goes upwards, I change the sign here, right? So I have this current source now is simply IT times GMRS. Okay? So in other words, I force a current into the output here. I force a current into the drain. That develops a voltage here on the source. The dependent source inside the transistor starts pumping current out the drain. In other words, this, with, with this voltage being developed here on the source, what it does is it forces current upwards inside this, as shown by this dependent source here. Now, what does it mean to have, what, what are we trying to calculate? We're trying to calculate what VT is. How do we figure out what VT is? Well, VT is going to be the voltage drop across R0 plus the voltage drop across RS. Okay, so let's just write that down. So VT is equal to voltage drop across RS, I'll just, plus the voltage drop across R0. The voltage drop across RS we already calculated. It's equal to IT times RS. IT times RS. The voltage drop across R0 is going to be what? It's going to be all of the current. This current's going up into this node. This current's going into this node. So if I do KCL on this point right here, I get IR0, which is the current flowing through R0, is equal to I test, the current coming from the, this test current source, plus the current coming from this dependent source. Right? Because now it's pumping. And where can it go? It only can go. It, this current source is forcing a current this way, this current is forcing this way, so if I do KCL here, I'm going to find IR0 is equal to I test plus GMRS times I test. Okay? Now, let's plug down into this formula here. VR0 is simply, this is equal to IR0, the current I just calculated, times R0, times this resistance here. So I end up with I test times GMRS times R0. In other words, V test, the voltage here, let me write this down here now, V test is equal to, and we factor out the I test, it's going to be equal to RS plus GMRS times R0. Okay? Okay, I'm missing something here. Close enough. Okay. <laughs> okay, so here, look what's happened here. I put in a little current, and you would think, you know, if we just didn't have this dependent current source, what would we see? The voltage we would see here would be R0 plus RS times I test. But instead, what I see is a, a resistance GR0 plus GM, I mean, oh, I'm sorry, RS plus G, RS plus GMRS times R0. I see instead of just this R0 here, I see it amplified by GMRS. So what's going on here? What's going on here? And this is pretty important to, to see this kind of, you know, what, what's really happening inside this transistor. I force a current in the drain. That dependent current source starts pushing, because of the change of the voltage on the source, starts pushing current out. That all gets dropped across R0. Okay. Right. That gives us a big voltage drop. 
So from looking from the point of view, looking into that drain, I put a little bit of current in, all of a sudden I see a big voltage appear. We don't know why that happened. What way, one way we can think about it is, well, it's just a big resistance. In other words, if I try to push a current into this node right here, into this drain, I'll see a big voltage appear. That's just like a very large resistance. Okay? So effectively what's happening, this dependent current source is amplifying the size of this output resistance we have here, and it does it because of this voltage that's being appearing on the source of this of this uh, of this transistor. So you get it? So in other words, if we look in this let me just redraw this and say it again here. So I'm looking into here. I force a current into that node. Okay? I see a big voltage appear. The voltage goes as RS plus GMRS times R0 all times IT. There's an amplification here of this R0 and it comes from the dependent current source which is causing a lot more voltage drop across this little R0 right here. Well that's really useful. So now, okay, so this is how it all works. Now what you need to remember now is what happens. If you put a source degeneration resistor in, in other words, you look in the drain and have a resistor in the source, the resistance you see in that drain will appear to be very large. Remember that's what we wanted. Remember what we talked about early on what a good transistor was? A good transistor had a really flat versus, this is the slope out here is basically 1 over R0. This is, this is large scale. I'm jumping up to R large signals again. This is a, a good transistor had a nice flat slope out here. This was that output conductance of this transistor. You know, it re often ends up like this if lambda is pretty small. One way we can make things better is make the transistor width length longer, right? Remember that improved lambda. Another way we can improve the output resistance, and it improves it a lot, right? Because it improves it by this factor GMRS, is to put a little resistor down in the source. So that ends up making our, our output look very much like an ideal current source. In other words, we'll change the voltage on the drain and very little current will change. Yeah? Doesn't that affect the gain, though, like make the gain really bad? I haven't talked about the gain yet. Okay, so let me, I'll do that in a second. Right, so just right now, just get this idea of what's happening with our out because we're going to use this a lot, right? This is going to be a key trick for us to get really good current sources, okay? Because this, this looks like, right now it's a gain stage, so it's a different problem here. But we're going to use the same idea to do, to use this fact, which is almost, it's like an ideal current source, right? We have, okay. All right. So now let's get to your point. Good question. So, um, uh, let's do, so we now know what R out is, okay? Okay, and if you work this out in the notes here, where did I do that? And you do it all in notes, work it out in detail, right? So I'm not throwing everything away like I did there. Here's V test or I test. You end up with this answer right here. If I leave GMB in, you can sort of see here's the R0 times GM times RS. That's the most important parameter there, right? But this is the whole answer right there. So let's just, you know, you just do the algebra there. You can get that. Let me just write that down. R out is equal to RS plus R0 times 1 plus GM 1 plus chi, if you include the GMB thing, okay, times RS, okay. So this, so here's that. So if this is GMRS is much greater than 1 and chi is small, then it's, this is just what I had a second ago. All this, of course, is in parallel with RD. So this is our output resistance. This enhancement factor here is due to this small current source. Okay? Now, what about gain? Gain is equal, as we know, equal to big GM times R out. Well, we've got R out. Now let's do big GM. So big GM, how we do it? So we um, take our, here's RD, Here's RS, here's VN, 
and here's V out. And to calculate big GM, what do I do? I short the output and calculate the current that I get there, and I get big GM is defined as I out over V in. Okay? Well, if I short this output, okay, now I need to figure out, again, let me throw out GMB first, or VBS. Let me set that equal to zero for my little calculation here. I get the idea. You can, we got it exactly done in the notes here. If you want to look at that. So here's the important thing to note here. I said this quickly last lecture. What if we when we apply a VN and here's a VGS, we don't get all of VN directly across VGS. VGS does not equal to VN. Right? The current which flows through here, right, is equal to what? If this is shorted out here, the current which flows down through here is going to be equal to pretty much a good approximation, equal to uh, IDS is going to be equal to GM times VGS, right? That's the, the dependent current source inside this transistor, right? So IDS equals GM times VGS. If I throw out R0 and I throw out um, the current through R0 is very small compared to GM, so that's not very important. And I've thrown out the body effect issue, okay? So it's also small usually. So this is the important equation. If this is true, the voltage drop across RS, VRS for this case, is going to be equal to GM times RS times VGS, right? That's the voltage drop across here. So VGS is equal to VN minus this voltage here, which is the voltage drop across RS, which is minus GM times RS times VGS. Okay? So in other words, I put a voltage here, it generates a current from that dependent source, that drops across RS, which reduces VGS. Okay? If we reduce VGS, we know what that does. It reduces the amount of current that we actually get. So it's a feedback circuit. This is actually a feedback circuit. Okay? But let's just solve it right now. Move this up a little bit. Okay. So I'm just going to take VGS and bring this over. So it's going to be 1 plus GM times RS is equal to VN. All right? Just bring that on the other side. So VGS, the actual VGS that we get into our transistor, is equal to VN, the voltage we apply to the gate, divided by 1 plus GMRS. Okay? So what's happened? We put a voltage on this gate, it generates current, it drops a voltage across here, and reduces VGS, which reduces our current. So we don't get the, the same amount of uh, VGS. Okay, so, so if I want to look, look at what IDS is now. This is equal to GM times VGS, right? So it's going to be equal to GM times this. So it's GM times VN over 1 plus GMRS. IDS is equal to I out. This is our minus I out. I got minus I out. Okay? So big G sub M. Okay, is equal to GM over minus 1 plus GMRS. So big G sub M without this resistor here was equal to G sub M. With that resistor there, it's GM over 1 plus GMRS. Yes? I was wondering why is IDS equals minus I out? Isn't there any current flowing through RD? It's shorted here, right? RD, this is RD, right? So this is shorted. This is shorted. This is grounded now, small signal, so there's no current through RD, right? Okay? All right. And I, I out, I defined as going out, and IDS is going down. Right? Okay, everybody buy this? Now, if you remember back to our, my little simplified answer for R out, right? R out is equal to, and let's, I'll leave, put RD back in again, RD in parallel with basically RS plus GMRS times R0, 
Okay. Well, GMS RS times R0 is going to be much smaller than RS, so we can get rid of that. Okay. So now let me just get to the approximate answer here. All right. Let's let, um, so we end up with the gain, AV is equal to big GM times R out, and this is going to be equal to minus GM over 1 plus GM RS, okay, times RD in parallel with GM RS times R0. Okay. Now you can sort of see a couple, let's take some limits here. Okay. Let's say that RD is much, if R, for RD, much less than GM RS times R0. And this will actually be true. This circuit here, you can't put a very big resistor up here because you get too big a voltage drop across it, right? So we'll have to do a different circuit. And we'll put a current source up here pretty quickly. But right now, if there's a resistor up here, you pretty much end up in this limit that I'm calculating right now, okay? And if we also say that GMRS is, is much greater than 1, okay, so this is much greater than this factor, and that's true if you make RS large enough, what happens then? So this is much less than this, so this just becomes equal to RD, and this becomes much greater than 1, so this just, the GMs cancel, you just end with 1 over RS. So your answer comes out to be AV is equal to minus RD over RS. So that's pretty nice. That's a kind of a good little, you know, it's a, there's a lot of, you could solve all the approximations I make, it won't be exactly right. Yeah? I'm sorry, why did you cross out RS again in R out? You said... Why did I cross out, which one? In R out, up there. Okay, I said RD... No, up, up there, one more. There. To the right. There, okay. <laughs> RS, okay, let's factor it out. It's 1 plus GM R0, right? GM times R0 is a pretty big number. That's like 100 or 1,000, right? So I'm just saying it's big compared to 1. Okay. Right. That's it. Probably usually true. Just but always true. Okay, so these little approximations, you end up with this answer here. In other words, the gain of a stage like this is the ratio of this resistor to this resistor. If, the most important part was this GMRS had to be much greater than 1, this, this part right here. Okay, because the resistor like this, this probably is always going to be true. Okay, so that's a pretty nice answer to get. So if you want a gain of 10 pretty accurately, and not, here's something really important here. Notice what else happened. There's no GM in this expression, right? Remember we talked about the issue of we can't control GM and you know, there's variation of all sorts of stuff? And we'll try to make circuits that aren't dependent on the circuit parameters themselves. Well, here's one that does it, right? We've now got rid of the fact that th there's, you know, GM is not part of this expression. As long as this is true, right, and this is true as well, then we end up with this, it's a, again, it's a ratio of resistors. And in actual fact, ratios of things like resistors are very accurate in our process. In, 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 semicon in silicon, right? We'll put down two resistors. We'll do this by making polysilicon lines, okay? Polysilicon will have so much ohms resistance per unit length, okay? And we'll if we make ratio two of those things, we'll be very accurate. I mean, numbers will be like accurate fraction of a percent. Whereas G sub M could vary by like 10 or 20 percent pretty easily. I mean, K prime the numbers will give you, that'll, I told you about that, you know, typical, fast, and slow stuff. Well, K prime will change a lot, right? You know, and, you know, plus or minus 20 percent would not be unlikely at all between the extremes of what the process will give you. But we can use this kind of circuit, we can get it like a gain of 10 if we just make the RD to RS ratio a factor of 10. Okay, so, important point. So that's ratio, that's one. That's one limit, okay? This limit here. Let's do another limit. Let's take the limit where RD is, is much, much greater than GMRS times R0. Okay, let's take that limit. Not likely to happen with a resistor here, because like I say, if you try to do this, this number here is going to be like megohms or tens of megohms. You put in 
of 10 microamps, 10 microamps and 10 megohms gives you how big a voltage drop. Figure that one out. V equals I times R. Okay. <laughs> it's like 100 volts, right? Right. 10 megohms, 10 microamps, that's 100 volts. In other words, 100 volts is going to drop across this. If I really have something, it's a resistor here, it's so large, it's much bigger than this GMRS R0 factor. The way we'll do that, like I say, is we'll use a current source here, and that changes the way that this this works. So let's take my, believe me, this is an interesting limit, okay? <laughs> Though it's not for this particular circuit. If this is true, then what happens is we end up, and let me just go right to the exact expressions right here. So, so well, I, I can do this, my sloppy expressions for a second here. Um, this is, in this limit, AV equals um, GM over 1 plus GMRS, okay. And in this limit, we're going to say this is equal to GM times RS times R0, okay. If this is much greater than 1 like before, this is RS, the GMRS cancels with this GMRS, and we end up with GMR0. Okay. So in other words, the output resistance goes up when we put this resistor down in the source. The GM goes down. The GM amount, the amount the GM goes down is the same as the amount the output resistance goes up. Therefore, what happens is, in the limit where you're not limited by this RD up here, you end up with the same gain you had as if you did not put that resistor there. If RD becomes important, we then don't see the increase in output resistance coming from this RS, and then our gain just drops, right? right? So in other words, AV, in this, I went to a full limit here, but you can sort of see it's equal to GM over 1 plus GM RS times RD. The amount that the gain is dropping is this 1 plus GMRS factor, right? GMRD, if this was the case where RD was much, much less than GMR0RS, right? For this limit here, the gain is reduced by this amount, okay? It's when you don't have, make this really large that you get this increased output resistance and you end up back where you started from. So why do you ever do this, you might say? Well, it's not so useful. It's useful to do this for this reason right here, that we get a nice, low-valued gain. Sometimes you only want to gain a 5, or you want to gain a 10. Because here's something you, I think I mentioned this before, a parameter of these circuits is the gain bandwidth product. And we'll talk about this later on in the year. The bandwidth of a circuit is how fast it goes. If we want to go 10 gigahertz, okay, like for a radio circuit, 5 gigahertz, you know, 5 gigahertz for wireless LAN, 802.11a. If you want to go 5 gigahertz, the gain bandwidth product, okay, is relatively constant for a circuit, okay, and for a transistor, for a given process. So in other words, if I want to go faster, I got to make the gain less. I can make the gain less by th doing something like this, okay. In other words, if I, if I try to get a gain of 1,000, and I have a gain bandwidth product that's equal to... 100 gigahertz, okay, then I'll end up with only a bandwidth of 0.1 gigahertz, right? If I ask for a gain of 10, I have a gain bandwidth product of 100 gigahertz, I'll get a bandwidth of 10 gigahertz, and I'll be able to meet my spec at 5 gigahertz. Right? Okay, so that's important. So sometimes you need to drop the gain. Yeah. So you're saying that putting in the high RD just cancels out the effect of putting the RS on the gain? Okay, so well, let, me, let me say it this way. Okay, let me. Okay, so let's so let's start off with this circuit. V in, V out, and let's ground this for a second. Okay, so for this case, what do I get? I get GM RD in parallel with R zero is the gain. Okay, circuit one. Circuit two, I put a resistor down here, and I let R. And then what I end up with is, again, I end up with big G sub M is equal to GM over 1 plus GMRS. So I lose transconductance. 
But if RD and my R out now becomes equal to RD in parallel with GMRS times R0, okay? If RD is small compared to this and I lose transconductance, then I lose ground, okay? So if RD is small, okay, then what I'll end up with is a gain of GM over 1 plus GM RS in parallel with RD. And if GM's RS is greater than 1, then I end up with RD over RS like I talked about, minus here. Then, the other case is if RD we can manage to make that very large. Let's let RD be very large compared to GM RS R0, which I don't, haven't shown you how to do that yet, but I will. Then we end up back to a gain of equal to G minus GM R0, back to where we started from at the beginning here. Okay? Okay? Get the sort of all the limits there? Yeah. So this cancels. This cancels out basically, right? Yeah. All right. Is that what you ask? Okay, right. That's the summary of that. Okay. Any questions? What about that? So, here's the little th item to burn into some neurons somewhere. Okay? Ready? <laughs> the thing to burn in here is if you stick a resistor down in the source, and look in the drain, the resistance goes up. And it goes up a lot. It goes up by this GMRS factor. Instead of just seeing R0, you see GMRS times R0. Okay? And we'll have different configurations of this circuit. Linda Now let me so the exact answers that I did, here's here's the G sub M exactly. GM over 1 plus RSGM times 1 plus chi if you leave the body effect in there. So it just enhances the GM by this body effect. So the body effect actually, well, it, it's, it's increasing the GM here. So in some sense it might help you. And it helps you in the output resistance because it actually makes it a little bit bigger. Right? Um, <laughs> here's the R, R out, which is looking down in here, the R out prime, just like calculate. Here's the full answer. RS plus R0 times 1 times 1 plus chi GM RS, right? So I'm saying ignore the 1 most of the time you can, just about all the time you can. The chi increases that GM factor here a little bit, okay? But anyway, it's the answer I had before, right? Okay? All right. Any... And here's just showing us what I just was saying in the notes here. Here's big GM. Here's that factor. Here's the GM part. Here's the full R out part. RD is large. Then this, these two things cancel out. And they cancel out exactly, not just in this approximation that I made. Okay? Going, going, gone. So we did inverter, inverter with so if you want to get high output resistance, put a source resistance down. So this, uh, this, this circuit can have high output resistance, except for that RD, which actually reduces the output resistance. So this circuit has potentially high output resistance. It has lots of gain. Uh, and it's our common gain stage. Okay. I right. should say one more thing about it, too. Let me just say one last thing. Let's jump to large signal. Okay, I've been talking all small signal analysis now, right? Let me just hop over to large signal just for a second, okay? Large signal analysis, large signal the biasing, okay? Putting this resistor down there helps making biasing easier, okay? Why is that? Here's uh, RD, here is RS. Here is V in, and here's V out. Large signal, DC voltages. I want to figure out what voltage I need to put at V in in order to get the right V out. Okay. Well, what is V in? V in needs to be equal to VT plus VD sat plus Okay, and let's say I, I, what's V out going to be equal to? V out, 
So let's say, so V out is whatever, say it's given. So V out's a given value, right? So I'm trying to calculate the V in for that. If we, once we have V out, we can calculate IDS. IDS equals V out divided by RD. I can calculate voltage across here, right? What's that going to be equal to? It's going to be VRS is equal to IDS times RS, right? Fully drop across here. So in other words, I can say that the VN to support is, so the VN I need to have is going to be VT plus VD sat, and this is VD sat calculated at IDS equal to V out over RD, and that's that square root formula, right? All right. Plus V out times RS over RD, right? So this V out's a function of IDS. V, VT's pretty constant. You know, we can you know, figure out what that needs to be, right? If we have body effect. This is the complicated thing, and it's a function of all sorts of stuff, okay? And then this is kind of a constant again. It's a ratio of resistors. So what happens if this is relatively large compared to this? We can ignore this term right here. So Vn is equal to Vt plus V out times Rs over Rd. So that's a pretty easy biasing thing, okay? It becomes pretty independent of just about all, all we want. So generally you can't totally get rid of this term like I just showed you here, but it desensitizes the circuit. It makes you less sensitive to this current dependent part of the voltage on Vn. Otherwise, you know, set if, if I didn't have that resistor here, right? Right. If I have the old standard circuit, I mean, then it's equal to VT plus this VD sat thing, right? And I've got to really set VT right to to set this VD sat exactly what I want. But if I, and that's a function of current, so there's just that little quadratic relationship there. So it's, you know, remember IDS goes as Vn minus Vt quantity squared. So I get the squared dependence and all that stuff inside there, right? But this sort of simplifies it. So this desensitizes, makes it easier to do the biasing if you have this kind of biasing system, system circuit like this. So, And sometimes when you're doing your circuits, you're going to have trouble, I told you, when you're doing your projects, you're going to have trouble getting this biasing right. And one way you can help yourself is to put this little source resistor down here. It can reduce the gain. But it's better to have a low, bit of lower gain than it is to have the device to go into linear region operation on you, okay? Because <laughs> then you get no gain, right? So sometimes wasting a little bit of gain like this might be worthwhile to help the biasing out. Everybody see that? You get that? Question? Yes. Uh, can we have a break? <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> sure. Okay. Break. That's that's just fine. Sure, <laughs> always better to. Oh.
Just to sketch the current. So I want like, specific values. I'm not sure how people are doing that. I guess. Um, Source here, this is voltage source here. Okay, so uh, here you can find VDD, something with voltage source here, and it's a, uh, not, a vo not a voltage source here. I'm just saying I want the V out to be a certain value. Come back. How? I'm designing my circuit. I'm a designer. Okay. I want this to be in a. In a way I'm going to set it is by having this voltage correct, so the right current goes through there that sets that voltage should be out. So it's grounded here. No, no, this is large signal. This is large signal. VDD. Uh, no, I forget it's large VDD because so we have a VDD here. Right. So IDS should be VDD minus VDD. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay, I just. Okay. Let's get rolling again. I just got made a mistake here, so let me. Um, what I should have done was V out the voltage across here. ID IDS is not V out over RD, right? It's equal to VDD. Crunch. I'm sorry. VDD minus V out over RD. All right. Okay. That was. Okay, so sorry about that. So this should be equal to. So let's. I have to choose a value for V out. Let's say V out, like I did the other day, is VDD over two, right? Then this would be VDD over two times RS over RD. I'm just saying, if you know the voltage drop across RD, you can calculate the current. If you know that current, you can calculate the voltage drop across here, and then that voltage drop plus VT plus VD sat has is what V in has to be. And if you make this voltage drop across here large compared to VD sat, by making VD sat small, make VD sat small, how can you do that? Well, you can make it by making the W over L big. One way to do it. All right. Work with law of small currents, that would do it. Okay. So if th those are small, then that gets rid of this term, and you're just a function of VT, VDD, and RS and RD, right? Quite often, you can't just get rid of this entirely. But if it's a small fraction, if it's small compared to this, then you're still less sensitive to the values here. You're less sensitive to the value of K prime. You're less sensitive to the value of W over L. The overall bias won't change as much, right? That's what you might desensitizing it. It's zero sensitivity if this is really small. It's lots of sensitivity. You know, it's at VGS minus V, you know, this is K prime W over L. So it's got linear sensitivity if this is very large and this doesn't exist at all, and then it's kind of, you know, halfway between if it's sort of, sort of comparable. Okay? New circuit. Common gate. Common gate. These are, now we're going to do these really fast because you've got all the machinery to do this stuff. Here's the common gate circuit. We're going to put the signal in on the source and take it out on the drain. Now, I've turned the transistor sideways. That's something else you're going to have to get used to a little bit. It's called you know, sort of topology. I mean, if I draw, let's take my last circuit. You know, I, I've been always drawing it like this. Let's say, right, right. I put the input over here, and I put take the output there, and I have R D there. What happens if I did this? What's the answer to that circuit? Same thing we had before, right? Okay, so you got to get used to having. I mean, people will do this to you. They will not always draw it the same way. Okay, right? And part, sometimes just for convenience. Sometimes some of our circuits kind of make it look nicer if you do it different ways. But this is exactly the same circuit we just analyzed, right? So what we're going to do now, instead of putting the input here on the gate. We're going to put the input on the source. And if you remember, 
it's VGS, which is really the important parameter, right? So it's here we have VGS is equal to VN minus zero for this case. For this one, it's going to be here's VGS. VG, VGS is going to be equal to zero minus VN. Write a small signal. I do a small signal, right? Minus VN. All right. So it's just, I'm just actually, it's an inverting thing, right? Put on the gate, you get an inverting output. Remember, all our games, remember, were GM times R out. It's always had a minus sign here. By putting it on the source, I, flip, I flipped the sign. It's basically, the, it goes in, VGS is minus VN, and so then I get, I don't get this. So this is non-inverting. It's pretty much the same circuit, right? It's going in here, going in here, the gain's the same. What's big GM for this circuit? Can you tell me that? Big GM is simply going to be equal to, you know, we short this output, put the input here. What's the answer going to be? GM. Just simply going to be GM. All we've done is change the sign, right? So let me, I'll do those small single things in a second. But, so basically, the point is this is the, it's almost the same circuit. The input resistance is going to be different. The small single input resistance is going to be different. So you have to deal with that. What about biasing this thing? Biasing these things, you got to, it's almost the same as before, right? You got to set VGS correctly. You may have two source, maybe a voltage on the gate you have to deal with, and a voltage on the source you have, the DC voltage on the source you have to deal with, okay? But once you do that, okay, I mean, because generally you work, okay, so, then you just have to, you can, IDS is simply going to be VGS, where VGS is, this big VGS is equal to VG minus VS, right? This voltage here, the voltage minus the voltage there. So that's, so it's pretty much the same DC issues we had before. You calculate what V out, what V out you want to have, you find the current through R, RD here. Once you have RD, then you know you have to set VGS right to, to support that ID. Okay? So that's the large signal. A bigger we got a problem we have here, notice we have this if we haven't tied off the source, we're now changing the source around, so we're going to see body effect on this circuit. Okay? So that's a little bit different. And that'll show up in a second. Okay? So there's the DC analysis, pretty much the same as before. Okay? Now, let's do the small signal stuff. Um, this, okay, so here's what I did. This probably confuses you, but... So remember, our transistor's laying sideways now. So, and here's the input on the source. The gate's sitting down here, and it's grounded. Here's VG, okay? So, doing my, drawing my small signal sideways now, okay, I end up with this circuit here. So, you just have to sit down and go through this, make sure this is the same. So, before it was going down, right? I had R0 between the drain and the source. So, this is the drain. Here's the source. Here's the gate. So, here, here's the R0 between the drain and the source. Here's the current, the body effect current source, here's the regular GM current source we have to deal with, right? These are all minus now, minus VN, because VN's on the source, right? So I've, these were, VGS is equal to minus VN. So I, I end up with a minus VN times GMB and minus GM times VN, okay? So now, Let's do one thing that's pretty straightforward. Let's calculate big GM, okay? How do we calculate big GM? Big GM, we short this, okay? We short this, we put it in our V ends on this side here, and I want to calculate the current going into here. Now, can we simplify this circuit? What do we have here? We have dependent sources dependent on the voltage across it. 
So what is that? A resistor, right? So we can redraw this now. So let me redraw this thing. Here's Vn. Here's our R0, and here's our I out that I'm trying to calculate. And here, this current source here, I flip it around, have it go in this direction, change that sign of that. So it's Vn, Gm, so the current through here is equal to Gmb times Vn, which is like a resistor of size 1 over Gmb. Flip this around. This is like a resistor of size 1 over Gm. So what is I out? So big G sub M is equal to I out over Vn. And what's that going to be equal to? It's going to be Vn. What's I out going to be equal to? Well, it's going to be Vn. This is grounded here, right? So it's this voltage across this parallel resistor combination. So big GM is simply R0 in parallel with 1 over GMB in parallel with 1 over GM. Okay? It's one way to write it. Another way to write this is equal to 1 over R0 plus GM times 1 plus chi. That's the same thing. 1 over R0 is usually going to be very small, so this is usually not important. So the GM of this circuit has actually increased a little bit if we use the body effect, if we, if we allow it. So it actually helps. Body effect is, is one of the rare cases where body effect actually helps you. It makes the GM a little bit larger. Since gain is GMR out, having a little more GM is always good. Okay? Everybody got that? So we got big GM. Let's go back to my, let me draw this thing. Here's the out. What is our out? Who can give the answer to that? How do we calculate our out? We set the independent source to zero, set Vn to zero, so this gets grounded. We're looking into the drain here. It's going to be RD in parallel with what we see looking into the drain here. Is that a, sim is that a familiar problem? Yes, it's exactly the problem. We s it's exactly the same as the common source case, right? Because the VN set to zero, so we set it once we do that. So looking into here is R zero. So R out of this state circuit is equal to R zero in parallel with RD. Okay. What's the gain? Gain is equal to GM R out. It's going to be equal to we had the gain was. GM times 1 plus chi, I'll forget that one over R0 things, times R0 in parallel with RD. So it's almost the same as we had with the common source case of this little extra enhancement here. Okay? That's not much different. Now, let's look at the input resistance. That's looking into here. What is that? Any takers on that one? Okay. So let's let's go for that one. So that one's different. We're looking into the source instead of looking into the gate. Looking into the gate was infinite input resistance. Looking into the source is actually quite small. Okay? So this is a really big difference. This is the difference between these two stages the common source and the common gate. Common gate has a low input resistance. Everything else is about the same. Output resistance is about the same. The gain's about the same. But it's the input resistance which is really different. Okay? That actually usually gives us a problem. It turns out this circuit is good for some high speed circuits. Okay? So we'll, we'll find that out later, you know, after the semester. After this, the midterm. Okay. So let's do the input resistance. Okay, how do we do it? We, we take a test. 
So here's our circuit. Let me just. What are we going to do? We're going to put a test current into our circuit. Okay, so and we're going to calculate what V test is, right? Our typical technique, right? So here's here it is. So here's the test current. Here's the small signal equivalent. And what I've done now, I just collected these two things together. One plus chi, I mean that, that was GM is in parallel with GMB. I just collected these two current sources together times VT. I can't just turn this into a resistor now. Why is that? Okay, right? Because this side over here is changing voltage on this side. Okay, so that's not this, this current source is not a function of the voltage across it. The voltage across this current source is VT minus V out, but it's a function of VT. So it's not really a resistor here. So in, in this configuration, right, with this output changing. Okay, see that. So we have a dependent current source, a function of this input, and so here's our small single circuit. I can do, I need to calculate what the test current is here, and I guess I did, um, looks like I did a test voltage here, right? Mm, drive a test, drive a voltage and te test the current, because I test, yes, yeah, so I did actually reverse here, test voltage, sorry, VT, and I'm calculating the current going in. So this is like, so I'm putting a VT voltage here. I'm calculating what the current is. So here's so I'm calculating the current going into this circuit. Current going in the circuit is VT, which I'm setting by my test voltage, VT minus V out over R0. So that's the current through here. It's plus, these are all plus, GM times 1 plus chi times VT. So if I set VT by my test voltage, this is the amount of current going through this current source. Okay. equals zero. What's that all about? <laughs> Forget that. Okay. Sorry, this has got to get fixed. So fix this up. Minus is plus plus. I guess this is I T plus this equals zero. This is equal sign shouldn't have been there. I guess that's what happened. Okay. So V out. So now we got to calculate what V out equals I T times R D so we can calculate what V out is. Okay. Because IT goes into here, then IT has to come all together on the other side here. So we do KCL here and KCL here. This intermediate node goes away. Right? Okay. I solve for VT over IT by plugging this in, and I end up with this. Okay. The input resistance is equal to R0 plus RD over 1 plus 1 plus chi GM times R0. A little bit complicated. This was one you kind of need to write down somewhere. I mean, put on your hand or something like that. Right? <laughs> Back of your eyelids. Okay, so this one's a little bit weird. Okay, so let's look at some limits here. Let's take the limit when RD is quite small compared to R0. The output resistance is small compared to R0. That means that we get rid of this term right there. So it becomes R0 over 1 plus chi GM times R0. If we forget the 1, which you usually always can, right? 1 plus chi times GM R0, okay? We end up with R0 over 1 plus chi times GM R0, and the R0s cancel. So you end up with 1 over 1 plus chi times GM. The thing to remember here is almost easier than this. Let's forget the chi for a second, okay? And we end up with 1 over GM. So this is the thing to really remember. Going in on the source, looking in to here, what you see approximately is 1 over GM. That's a pretty small value. That's like 100 ohms or something like that, okay? If this gets really large, okay, let's let this RD be equal to R0, then what happens? If RD equals to R0, we can plug into here, we see it's R0 plus R0 over 1 plus chi times GM R0. And this is equal to 2R0 over, and let's forget the chi, 
over GM R0, R0 is canceled, you end up 2 over GM. So if this RD becomes equal to R0, or this RD becomes equal to R0, the input here goes from 1 over GM up to 2 over GM. Okay? We will actually end up with circuits that are able to make this equal to GM R0. Okay? We'll, we'll be able to do that. Okay? GM R0. Okay, so GM R0, R0. Okay? Like that. We'll end up circuits that are able to do that. Then this input resistance goes all the way up to equal to be equal to R0. Okay? So this input resistance can go up, but typically, if this is not really large, looking into here is actually quite small. This is like 100 ohms, small number. As opposed to our common source case, right? What was it looking into here? Infinity. So we go from infinite, infinite resistance looking for this common source case to something like 100 ohms. So that's a really big difference. Okay? Remember that. This circuit's good for high speed. It's not obvious why right now, but it will, will, it's fairly subtle why that's true. But it's a really good high speed circuit, and you have to just live with this input resistance problem. You've got to work around it. <laughs> Getting longer. Seven minutes, you can make it. <laughs> <laughs> Only one break a day. That's all we can have. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, come again with her. RS. Okay, so now we can add an RS into this thing. Okay, so let's do that. So let's take the circuit here. Common gate with a source resistance. That often happens because you're coming from another stage, right? Remember... Typically, we cascade stages together, right? We have this stage, we have another stage. And if I do the two-port equivalent, right, this is R out of, of the previous stage, and this goes into this stage, this is R into this stage. So you often have this input resistance coming from the previous stage, right? Okay. So let's, let's call that the source resistance right here, which is the output resistance of the previous stage quite often. What is the output resistance of this circuit. This R out prime right here. Let's do that one. You know the answer to that? Look familiar? Do we have to write lots of equations to figure this out? Do we? Do we know this answer? We know it, right? I see smiles out there. I know you know it. So, okay. This is that good old, the problem we just solved before. This is, it's just the same as common source with degeneration, right? That's just like this circuit. All right? I mean, here's our source, and here's our D. So this was... Before we put the input here, and this is what we had. But when we're calculating output resistance, remember what we do is we short the input, right? So we short this as well when we're calculating the output resistance. So it's exactly the same circuit that we had before when we calculated the output resistance of it. And what's the answer? R out prime is going to be equal to this simplified GM times um, RS times R0, right? That's roughly what it's going to end up. Or 1 plus chi, if you want to put that in there, and so on. But this is roughly. So you get this enhancement factor looking here if you put source resistance in here. And looking from here, same old story, RD is probably going to be much smaller than that, so it would probably end up just be RD. What's the gain of this circuit going to be? We're going to, I won't work it out, I did here in the notes. But we'll, let's calculate big GM. What's going to happen with big GM now? If we apply V in here, what's the resistance looking into that source? If I short the output, what's it equal to? 1 over GM. Another, we had two things today we should remember, right? One was the output resistance with a source resistor is this GM RS times R0, or it's various, you know, the big version of it is. 1 plus GM times 1 plus chi times RS, all times R0. So this is the big 
This is one formula you need to know. That's what happens when you have a source resistance with a output resistance. The other thing you should learn today, and equally important, is looking into the source, it's roughly equal to 1 over GM. And it's 1 over GM times 1 plus chi if you want to include that. So that's the second thing you should really remember today. So what's going to be the voltage applied at this point right here? V, let's call it V in prime. I got a voltage divider, right? It's RS in parallel with 1 over G. And I got a voltage division. So here's V in. Our whole circuit now can be modeled as 1 over GM. Here's RS. So I basically have a voltage divider here. It's going to reduce the voltage that's applied to this transistor by this division between RS and 1 over GM. Okay. I mean, one, why don't we calculate these effective resistances? You can just replace all that stuff by a resistance of that size, and then do all the simple calculations that you need to do. Right? That's the idea of this equivalent resistance, equivalent output resistance, and use that fact. Right? And we can go in and write all sorts of equations, figure it out. But you know, the thing to remember is just a little voltage divider going. This gets bit, this is really small now, right? This RS is really small, one over GM. If I have a very big resistor here, I'm going to have a big loss here. And that's what's wrong with this circuit. That's what's hard to make this circuit useful. Because unless you can make this, let's say we made this the output resistance of a common, let's say we did this. And we go into a common source stage. Now what's going to happen here? Here I have two stages of gain, it seems like. I should get GM, you know, R0 squared or something like that. Let's say this is very large. So I should get GM R0 squared, right? GM R0 from this stage, let's say this is much, much greater than R0. I should get GM R0 from this one, GM R0 from this one. But I don't. Because what's, what I have right here, looking into here, is 1 over GM. So how much gain do I get from here to here? One. That's exactly right. See how you got that? This output resistance here is RD in this direction, which I'm saying is really big. In this direction, another way to look at this, is like it's like a resistor of size 1 over GM. And then I have my little transistor here, right? Minus 1, actually. <laughs> okay. So this is really small, right? So the gain, I, so the R out I see here, if I include all these resistance, 1 over GM in parallel with RD in parallel with little R0, this R out of this thing is going to be equal, approximately equal to 1 over GM. Big G sub M of this circuit is equal to minus G sub M. The gain from here to here, the gain from here to here is simply going to be equal to minus 1. So this input has just killed all the gain of this first stage. It actually gives it back to us again on the second stage, right? From here to here. So basically, we have at this point right here minus Vn. From here to here, what's the gain going to be? It's going to be Gm times, if this is true, it's going to be Gm R0. So we get a big resistance, big gain again. This is actually a circuit we'll use because of the frequency response properties. Hmm. Getting a little bit behind. So we'll do source follower next time. But let me one 30 seconds, we can do it. Looking into here, what is the output resistance? Who can tell me? We short the input. What's the output resistance looking into here? One over GM. You got it. Done. Okay, all right. What's the big G sub M of this circuit? Apply a V in here. What's big G sub M? I short this. What's the current going to here? What's big G sub M? VN is equal to VGS. VGS, what the current, what's the current going to be flowing down to here? GM times VGS. So what's big G sub M going to be equal to? GM. Okay, what's the gain? Well, it's basically it's nearly one, right? If you put the stuff, so this circuit has a gain approximately one. It's a buffer. 
What's the output resistance looking into here? It's 1 over GM, very low. So this is a low output resistance. So that's why low output resistance can drive another low output resistance. Okay, so, that's, so this is good for output stages and things like that. No, hardly any gain, but low output resistance. That's its feature. Okay, so we'll talk more about it next time.